My name is Adriano Araujo. And I'm John Burlow. And we're here at Delta Museum to take you on a ride through Delta history. I'll see you there. Good. Captain speaking, and I would like to welcome all of you on this special charter flight of Million Miler Club, flight number 1060, en route to beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, and our special destination, the Delta Flight Museum. Should be a smooth ride today, but definitely some excitement during our journey. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of your journey. Welcome back to the Mini Miner Club. I'm here with uh, Tiffany Mann. We are here to talk about the Delta Museum. We came today and uh, did a visit to the surplus sale uh, right outside of this hangar. And now we visited the hangar and we have several images to show you uh, how Delta has uh, represented their history within this museum. So uh, welcome to our club. Tell me briefly about the history of the museum. Sure. So, in 1990, a group of Delta retirees was getting together and they wanted to form a museum. And they thought the best way to do, to do that would be to try to find one of Delta's first DC-3s. So they did research on the first five DC-3s and they found Ship 41, which was the silver DC-3 next door, being flown as a cargo plane in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Okay. So they managed to bring that plane to Atlanta, to this hangar that we're in right now, and for five years, completely took that airplane apart, restored it, and put it back together. So during that time frame, the uh, paperwork was filed to officially form the Delta Air Transport Heritage Museum, Inc., which is just the Delta Flight Museum today. So we were founded May 23rd, 1995. And when we were founded, the museum looked very different than it does today. We were open to the public by appointment only. The hangars were not air conditioned. The mezzanine that we're on right now was not here. Um, the 747 and the outside aircraft on our fleet were not here at the time either. And actually, this plane behind us wasn't even here. It was being flown as a regular passenger aircraft at that time. So we only had a select, of, a very small selection of propeller aircraft. So the museum started to grow. And in 2012 to 2014, we underwent a really big renovation here at the museum, about a little over $12 million renovation. And at that time, we air conditioned the hangar, which allowed us to uh, put more, yeah, seriously, allowed us for more comfort, but also because the hangars were climate controlled, we could put more stuff out on exhibit. So when this was not air conditioned, it's like, it's a maintenance garage. So if it's 100 degrees outside, it was 100 degrees inside. Yeah. And now that this is more climate controlled, we're able to put out things like paper, and textiles, and plastics, things that we would not have been able to do beforehand. So we grew exponentially with that renovation, and we reopened to the public in 2014 after the construction was done um, in honor of Delta's 85th anniversary and the we have a soft opening on the museum's birthday in May, and we've just been growing really since then. So since the reopening, we've added the 747, we've added um, the outside aircraft, um, including the DC-9 and the 757, those all came around that same time. And we've uh, just finished building a pavilion out by the 747, so that was our last year's project, and we're continuing to change out exhibits. Um, this is a normal part of our museum uh, exhibit plan. And we're open to visitors. Um, we hold events. You can see that we're getting set up for a really big event tonight. And about 100,000 people pass through our doors last year. So it's a growing and always changing experience. Always, yeah. What is the mission and vision of the Delta Museum? So, our mission is to preserve the history and heritage of Delta and all its affiliated airlines with ways that are educational and engaging for the public. 
So we collect the history of Delta Airlines, but also all the airlines on Delta's family tree, which is about 40 at this point. And we're here to preserve that history, to collect the corporate archives, and also to have our nonprofit collection for the public to see. What is one of the things that businesses make sure they don't miss? So I'm a little partial to the spirit of Delta behind us because I started in 2005 and this airplane retired in 2006 and we brought it over to the museum. So this was my baby uh, for when I first started here. Um, the Spirit of Delta is Delta's first 767-200 or 767 in the fleet. And this airplane had a really special history. In 1982, Delta employees and retirees got together and they raised $30 million and bought this plane as a gift to Delta. The aviation industry went through a really hard time in the late 1970s. Delta made it through that time period without laying anyone off, trying to find other ways to save money. And this plane had been on order from Boeing, and a group of flight attendants got together, along with a swelling number of employees, and said, you know, we'd like to buy this airplane as a present for Delta. And so they started a fundraising campaign that lasted several years, but they were able to raise the $30 million. This plane flew in regular domestic service from 1982 to 2006 before it came to the museum. It's the only one in the fleet named The Spirit of Delta. It's the only one in the fleet that had a gold trimmed widget at the front door. And in 2006, we brought it over. We air conditioned it. So at the time, it was the only air conditioned space besides our museum office uh, here at the museum. And we gutted two thirds of the plane. So row 13 and back no longer exists. So the front part of the plane is in final flight mode. So what it looked like when it last flew March 6, 2006. And then from row 13 and back, we opened up the space and we put exhibits inside. And we like to focus on flight attendants and all, uh, as far as the uniforms are concerned. We also like to focus on the story of the plane itself. So you'll see some images and artifacts we'll look into that. But I feel like this is something that really speaks to the Delta culture. And it also talks a little bit about the history of this company and where it's come, even in the last 10 to 15 years. That's a beautiful story. Uh, it was like a family, huh? Yeah. yeah. Right. How long should people plan to stand up with you uh, to make sure that they got the full experience? So our general visit time is between one and two hours for the most part. Of course, your visit just depends on you. How interested are you in reading labels? How interested are you in really looking at the artifacts? Um, but an average visit is probably about an hour or two. We do recommend that people come a little bit later in the morning or in the afternoon because the 747 is a slightly different hour. It's open from 12 to 4, whereas the hangars are open from 10 to 4.30. So if they can come a little bit later, they also get the 747 as part of their experience. That, that adds a little bit of time, nothing else is crossing the parking lot. Let's say I want to get involved as a volunteer. How does that work? How does the museum uh, find volunteers and how do you get involved? So we have a pretty good volunteer core. Um, we have a volunteer manager, Judy Bean, who also is our surplus sale manager. She does both. Um, if a volunteer, uh, if somebody wants to volunteer here at the museum, they just need to go to www.deltamuseum.org. So that is our website. There is a section on there where they can fill out a volunteer form to express their interest. They'll send that in, and then what we'll do is we'll contact them and find out what are you interested in? Um, have you had experience talking to people? Maybe giving a tour, maybe, you know, being trained to be a docent tour guide is the way they need, they would like to go. Or if they want to help out with sales, they could do that. If they wanted to be what we call a greeter, who is somebody that just generally talks to visitors saying, how are you doing? Welcome, make sure you see this, this, and this. And um, the easiest way to get start getting involved is just going to the website and filling out the form. That's your start. Now we do um, request that volunteers be over the age of 18, just because it's a little bit easier um, as far as schedules are concerned. But you know, we've had older teenagers with their parents come um, and volunteer together. 
We'll put you to work. <laughs> awesome. We'll talk a little about the vents. Uh, the museum is, uh, looks like it's a really cool place to hold the vents. Do you do that, and how can you get more information about it? So, we host about 250 to 300 events a year. Everything from 20-person meetings to 1,000-person receptions. Uh, we can hold that in the hangar. We have some various spaces, both inside and outdoors. So, um, you know, we have a, a very small event staff who can work with you to figure out what your needs are and then go from there as far as pricing, availability, uh, setup. The, the museum website does have a form that you can fill out that will, you tell us some of your interests, uh, how many people, what days are you looking at, what are your uh, event needs, and then from there, we will go ahead and reach out to you and contact you and start the ball rolling uh, on event night. So again, if you just go to deltamuseum.org, the forms are there. You look under the events section under host an event, and you'll be able to start the ball rolling that way. So before I come into the uh, museum, I, I browse the little, little website, and it's pretty informative. Uh, one of the things that I saw is there's a schedule of your uh, there's your calendar, so we can uh, pretty much uh, plan our uh, visit and make sure there's nothing happening. So. Uh, I would suggest before coming in, yes. just take a look at the, at the calendar there, right? We always tell everybody, please check deltamuseum.org, look at the front page to see what our list of upcoming closures might be. You can buy tickets and there's a calendar there as well. Or just give us a call. We're more than happy to help plan your visit. 404-715-7886. Uh, we will help you. We'll let you know if there's anything on the books that's coming for the day that you want to come visit. Um, if you wanted to book a simulator experience, you could do that as well, either through the uh, website or the call us, uh, either way. And um, if you wanted to book a private tour, we can do that as well. Now I will mention too, on every Tuesday at one o'clock, we offer some sort of guided tour that's free with admission. So if you happen to be in town on a Tuesday afternoon, try to get here around one because our tours do change. Um, the first, third, and fifth Tuesday of the month is all about the hangars and the airplanes and the hangars. The second Tuesday of the month is an interior tour of our DC-3 where everybody has to wear gloves and shoe booty. And then the fourth Tuesday of the month is all about the 747. So we generally try to change it up, but if you can come on a Tuesday afternoon, that's always a good time. If you would like a guided tour at a different day or a different time, we can work with you on that. Just give us a call. So if I'm in a motor later over in hell, I just can just come over here. Yeah, we That's generally recommend you have at least four to five hours as far as a layover is concerned because you will have to go back through security yeah. over the Atlanta airport. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I don't know if we talked about it, but you have the surplus sale. Yes. Uh, every second second Friday of every month Friday, every from month. nine to two. Mm -hmm. So today is surplus sale day. So it's always a little crazier on surplus sale day. Um, and those surplus sales are like aviation yard sales. You never know what you're going to find. It's always uh, a hunt to try to see if there's anything good in there that might appeal to you. And sometimes it's aircraft parts. Sometimes it's um, you know, marketing merchandise, sometimes it's just random stuff from Delta's cleaning out their closet. Uh, whenever Delta's getting rid of something, everything goes through archives first. The archives gets the right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that we have well represented in the collection or we don't really need for the archives, that's when it goes down to the surplus. Sounds good. I've, I've been there today and I got my dad. My dad was a travel agent for 30 years. So I got those souvenirs for him, so for his hat. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, it was a welcome. very nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. And uh, hopefully we'll see the 747 yes. and I'll report everything back to our viewers. Yes. You have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank come, you. come see us. <laughs> yes. Don't forget to stop at the gift shop to help to support the Delta Flight Museum. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to look at the other episodes of our trip to the Delta Flight Museum. If you like this video, please click like down here. 
Also subscribe to my channel and click the bell to see all the new videos that I post.